don't think the word boomer is blocked. First off, can we have a moment for this color? Excuse me. This is the polygon. So they did send me a spare plate. So this is what the plate looks like. I'm gonna set this aside because there is one already pre-installed. It is a 65% with a knob. It is huge. It has a giant brass back weight. I appreciate back weights that you can see, so I'm not mad at that. And then the back is pretty gorgeous too. I'm sorry, I love this color. <laughs> All right, shall we get going? So it does use the Keycolt method of seamless mounting style, like the number two, where the screws are all internal completely um, and accessed like behind everything. So I'm gonna go in from the top, make it drop. For this wet ass Let's go, pull that off. Gorgeous. So there is a little bit of room for foam here. That's not my personal fave. I don't personally super love a lot of foam, but it is kind of nice that they have like custom cut foam that you can customize. So you can either put more of it or less depending on your preference. I think that's fun that they have that to play around with. So props for customization. How heavy is the board? It's pretty heavy. I would say it's about the weight of anything with this amount of brass. I mean, it's not the lightest, it's not the heaviest. Most of the weight does come from the brass, but it's a solid heft. It, it feels pretty. So I can show you guys the gasketing. So this is a hot swap build, so it is going to be fairly quick. That also means like potentially, depending on how quick it is, we can play around with foam. I am going to build it the first time without any foam, besides maybe the bottom foam. There isn't much here, so I don't think it'll affect the sound too much. And I do feel like filling out these two recesses might be somewhat important. These are the silicone gaskets. As you guys know, if you've been listening to me long enough, silicone is probably the least dampening of them all. So this is probably going to sound just like a like a slightly nicer sound of board. So you guys can see the gasketing on the bottom. I want to see if these are removable or sticky. If they're too hard to pull up, I'm not going to pull them up. Yeah, they are sticky. So this is the internal plate. Sorry about the fingerprints. Uh, it's not me. Then here's the back. I will say the, um, the Anno is a bit streaky on this inside, but since you don't see it, I'm not too mad at it. You can see the difference, I think, in the Anno, especially right there where the light catches versus here. It just, it just hasn't been uh, sandblasted which is a choice that I think is totally valid, save some cost. But you can see that's not a problem with any of the pieces that are actually on the outside. Why do people use silicone then? It's all preference, Aiden. So the three major gasketing materials are silicone, rubber, and some sort of foam, usually pour on. Foam usually tends to add the most, um, most people call it flex. I don't think that's accurate. I would call it cushion. <laughs> Personally, flex is when something bends. So this is flexible, right? So this has flex, like there's there's torsion here versus like this, this is like a cushion. So pour on probably provides the most cushion or vertical bounce maybe. Uh, it's not very bouncy, but there you go. And then uh, also the most sound dampening. Silicone is in my opinion and in my experience kind of the middle ground. That's why a lot of people use it. It's still quite stiff. It doesn't allow for a lot of bounce, right? There's not a lot of compression here. There's not a lot of compression in it versus something like foam where there is a lot of compression available to you, but it, it's, it's easier to get a hold of. And then there's rubber, which is the bounciest and the least dampening and the least cushiony. Right. That's just the, the basic world of gaskets, as far as materials go. So here is the big knob we will be using. In plum. And then here are our other samples. So this is gold. So there are your color options. I'll uh, shift them around the light for you right here. Nice. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and screw the plate uh, and the PCB together. There are these standoffs that I am not uh, having to apply. They are soldered on, I would personally I appreciate the option, however, I would, it looks like they do make it an option for you to screw these in, which is good. I'm not seeing any overlaps with anything too important, so that's good. It's nice that they have both options. What is the purpose of long springs? So it's just a question of how you want it to feel. It is super interesting that that's become like a trend recently because I don't feel like anybody's been asking for longer springs or the way they feel, like nobody's really been commenting on them. It's just kind of happened. Can I say, I do appreciate these alignment pins. I like the way that they're implemented as well. I think it's pretty smart. 
All right, so we are gonna put in, I think the bottom mount screws, just like we would with a key coat. You guys have been here, we know how to do this before. And then we will put everything together. Let me go ahead and plug this baby in. Per usual, make sure you're pushing it in using the plastic, not the rest, otherwise you can damage it. You want that. I just went into key coat building mode. How do I screw those in? <laughs> Actually, I'm a little confused. Am I stupid? Ah, oh, I am stupid. Okay, there are holes. I just could not see them because I'm blind. <laughs> the ones on the floor. Stop telling people I keep keyboards on my floor. I don't. You're gonna get me in trouble. There's not a single keyboard on my floor. Don't listen to them. There's not a single keyboard on my floor. Do you have keyboards on your floor too? So it might be more than 40. I like the jelly. I still really like the jelly. I like it a lot. I have to use the back and neck Is it on the floor? Maybe. Maybe it's on the floor. The world will never know. So now we're gonna put this bottom bit together using the screws we have from before. I wanna make sure that I get this on directly so it doesn't scuff anything. So you don't wanna like drag this onto the case. You wanna put it like directly straight down, like so. Nice, and then we should be able to screw it in from the top. They look very different on the stream. Um, I mean, even this board, when I hold it at different angles and at different heights can look very different. So keep that in mind. I will say they're not 100% the same, um, even between the two knobs in person, but I wouldn't say the difference is... But yeah, as you can see, I don't know how well you can see down there, but when I try to put it in with the hot swap standoffs all screwed in 100%, it's not tight enough because there's nothing through the middle for it to actually do its job. So just be aware of that, no big deal. But as soon as I, I'm gonna pull these out and like reseat them because I believe with them bending out of the way, the pins got bent. If I try to do that again with something completely straight that already went in, it still has issues. But if I hold it, we can get it 100% seated. So just something to be aware of. But this is the way you should be installing it anyway. I was just being lazy, so. All right, so just like we do with key colds, screws in first, I've already done that. Uh, and then we will put the daughter board in. Per usual, always check which way the JST cable goes. Plug it in using only the plastic. Don't try to use the wire, it's not gonna work. And you might break it. Right. Seat that, make sure that the pins are aligned. Make sure we're seating properly. Hold on, there's a, nope, we're seating properly, nice. Flip this baby over for a sec. I bring this closer and then we will screw this assembly together again just like you do with key cold. So here we go. This is a polygon with Duroc stabilizers lubed with 205 grade zero, GMK Future Funk, and Hippos lubed with 205 grade zero. There you go, chat. 
I wonder what it sounds like with no dust mat or with foam. Well, you're not going to get anything without a dust mat ever from me. Um, I use dust mats to keep the bottom from getting damaged. Um, without foam, it's probably just a bit louder uh, and maybe has a bit of an echo. There's not much foam in here, though. There really, really is not much foam in here. Uh, it's just, again, to fill up those two cavities uh, and the rest on the back. But most of the reason why it's not very deep sounding is because the tray that it's in is is very small so there's not a lot of room for the sound to echo overall i think this is really high quality and at the end of the day the thing that should be your deciding vote is do you like the look of it that's important and do you like the sound of it and the feel that it's going to give you the feel it's going to give you without a doubt will be stiff <laughs> if you don't like stiff keyboards you will not like this keyboard there is no flex there will not be flex there's not a way to make their flex um just based on the design and the options that are there that is what you are stuck with uh, so make sure you are aware of that uh, the sound you will be getting will be clacky even if you put deep uh, deep switches in here it'll still be on the higher pitch side of those switches um, and it will fit, still be fairly muted you're not going to get super loud sound out of this so be aware of that that's just the design of the board so if you don't like that sort of sound then you're not going to like this keyboard probably but there you go have you spun the knob yet yeah there you go um it doesn't have increments so if you like tactility on your knob you're not going to get that from this be aware of that but other than that it's good can i see the angle from the side absolutely i am more than happy to give you multiple angles does the knob also act as a input i do not see any inputting there's no there's no press button so there's that all right here's your angles friends There's the top. The side one is going to be slightly out of focus. Sorry, I don't have variable focus on this lens. Let me zoom you in. There you go. There's your side. There you go. Really thought out design. I appreciate that. Super thought out. Super thought out. There was obviously a bunch of attention that was paid to this design. I will see you guys next time. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Okay, bye.